Hey, what's up everybody? In this video, we're going to prepare our na'e na'e, the fish that we caught the other day that we made a video on. And we're going to prepare it two ways. So here's the na'e na'e. Uh, I scaled it and cleaned it. And I'm going to start filleting it. So I dry it first. And I have my um, fillet knife and I poke a hole in it and start running the knife up along the fin do the same on the bottom and I move toward the tail and then I try to push the knife through and slice toward the end of the tail so what I'll do at this point is hold the little flap that I created and angle my knife down and run my knife along the spine to remove the fillet So I'm trying to um, leave as much meat on the fillet as possible and sometimes it doesn't work out all that well. So I make the way to the head, make the slice, and there's my first fillet. So I'm going to put this on the side for now and do the same to the other side. And uh, the one thing about the nai nai or uh, a lot of the surgeon fish is because it uh, chews or because it feeds on uh, the growth on the coral, uh, there's a lot of like sand grit on it. So you don't want to make sure to clean your knife often and even these fillets um, will be cleaning those off. So again, do the same process, punch through the tail. clean my knife because I don't want to put any of the grit on the meat and slice up to the head made a little miss miss there so probably left some meat on the bone make the cut put the fillet on the side so you can see on the carcass itself and on the board uh, some of the grit so I wash that off and right now, you know, make sure the board's clean because that will transfer on to the uh, meat. And I'm also cleaning this carcass, trying to get all the grit out. And because what I'm going to be doing, it's going to, um, trying to remove um, the remaining meat from the carcass. I'm going to try to use everything. So I'm going to dry it off. I'm going to grab a spoon and start scraping the bones so we do this with pretty much all the fish that we catch you know unless it's like super small any anything that we fillet we scrape the meat off the bones because uh, uh want to use everything that we can and even this carcass will be reused it'll go into our compost pile <laughs> but one uh, thing is it's like uh I buried this nai nai and I came back the next morning and i pretty sure a cat dug it up. So like sometimes that happens but eh, at least it fed something so I gotta bury it deeper. So sc keep scraping, get as much off as we can and this meat is what we'll do is we're gonna make some spicy poke w with that. So I'm gonna take the fillets and in the uh, uh, rib cavity, some of the grit sticks in there, so I'm trying to wash it off to make sure that the fillets are as clean as possible. Want to make sure that it's as, um, the meat's dry. We don't want any uh, of the water on it. And I'm going to run my knife from the back to the front, right along the skin, pulling the skin and sliding my knife through. So there's the first fillet. I'm going to cut along the pin bone. 
here's fillet one and I'm gonna cut this bottom meat here so uh, what we're gonna do is uh, this bottom section is going to be used for fish nuggets and the top one we're going to use some of that for sashimi and some of it for uh, fish nuggets so we're going to repeat the process here this one's going to be a little bit harder because I got a little cut in the uh, skin that you see right there but got it off again cut along the pin bones so that top fillet will have We'll, again, we'll use uh, for uh, some of it for sashimi, and we're gonna do the same thing. Run it along the pin bone and along the ribs, and so we just have meat, no bones. So there are the fillets and the scrapings. So now what we're gonna do is uh, marinate the meat, and. The one thing about the um, surgeon fish and most, most fish in general, it's like if you eat it the day that you uh, catch it, especially if you eat it raw, it's going to be a little bit more crunchy. So uh, right now what I'm going to do is uh, for the nai nai, I'm going to uh, marinate it and I'm going to use somen sauce, the somen soup base. So gonna take my trusty Ziploc bag pour just a little bit in it don't dilute it and put the fillets in it not gonna put the scrapings in there so I'm gonna seal it up and make sure that all the pieces are covered and I'm going to put it in the refrigerator for a day. And uh, you'll be surprised if you if you do this. I mean, you can another way to do it is you can just use salt, and um, it'll be very soft when you uh, eat it the next day. So what I'm doing is I'm taking the scrapings, I'm going to put in a little bit of Hawaiian salt. And I'm going to get some uh, sesame oil and sriracha from the fridge. I'm just going to put a small amount of sesame oil on it. Just lightly coat it. I'm running out. need to go uh, buy some more. And take the sriracha. And I'll put a liberal amount here. And that uh, bowl is we hand carved, uh, we turned out of avocado wood. And I'm just gonna mix it up, just use my finger. And I'm gonna leave this in the refrigerator. This one you can eat the same day. And, uh, but, or you could leave it a day. So fast forward a day and here's the nai nai that we marinated overnight in somen sauce. So I'm going to take it out here and we're going to make uh, sushi and fish nuggets. So you can see it's taken the color of the uh, somen sauce, a nice light brown color. And it, it's also absorbed the taste. It's also gotten a lot softer. So uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to dry all the pieces uh, for two reasons. One for the... Uh, sushi uh, that so it doesn't bleed all over the rice and also for the fish nuggets that it's able to absorb the batter so just gonna pat it dry so those rib cut pieces I'm gonna use for the fish nuggets and I'm just gonna use one of the top fillets for the um, sushi so I'm going to cut it at a slight angle and we're going to make nigiri sushi for this you 
you can see some um, cartilage those white lines uh, I'll cut some of it off for um, presentation purposes but it's not stringy at all especially since it marinated everything is like really soft so there are the pieces that we're going to use for our sushi so I'm cutting off one little piece where um, some of the skin stuck to and I'm going to cut these for um, the fish nuggets make them bite size so now all the fillets are prepared and it's time to get to final prep what I'm doing here is I'm going to uh, prepare the rice for our sushi So I'm going to use some rice vinegar and some median. So the rice is hot out of the cooker and I'm going to start with some rice vinegar. I'm going to sprinkle it on lightly and gently mix it in. Maybe not so gentle. Now it's time for the median and I'm only going to put a little bit on it. I'm going to put some on the rice paddle and mix it in because uh, the fish was marinated in the somin sauce which is uh, already sweet. So I'll mix that up and it's too hot to prepare right now so I'm just going to put a paper towel over it and put it on the side while we pre prepare the fish nuggets so the oil is hot we cook some chicken in it so we prepared we prepared some uh, mochiko batter mochiko flour with water and this time I'm making it a little bit thicker because I want it to be uh, have a really nice thick crust so I'm mixing in the fish nuggets and put them in the hot oil now with mochiko flour and especially since it's thick it's gonna take a little bit longer to cook than is it if i use the tempura batter which would be i mean with the tempura batter i'd be pulling it out almost as quickly as i put it in but the mochiko flour is gonna have a thicker crust so it will take a little bit longer to, to cook. So the important thing here is, because the fish is probably cooked already, is to keep turning it. So it almost kind of gonna look like a little um, dumpling, or a little wonton. It's a very different texture, uh, really like it. So you can either use this method or the other way we do it is we use a tempura batter and panko. That's a lighter, more crunchy uh, uh, coating. So it's stirring it actively so it doesn't burn. Looking for a nice golden brown and, and with the chopstick I'm feeling it. There we go. Start taking them out. You can see they do look like almost uh, like dumping like dumplings they taste awesome now it's time to uh, prepare the sushi so the rice has cooled down and I'm gonna put it on our ohio wood 
block that we made. So I'm not the greatest sushi maker. Totally amateur. Uh, we ran out of wa wasabi, so normally I'd put some wasabi on. But there's the first piece, and it wasn't so even. So make sure it sits nicely. And I'm going to do all the other pieces. So this is the last one. We're going to make six of them. Last piece. And the uh, nigiri sushi is done with the nai nai. I'm not done yet. I'm going to take a little bit of furikake and sprinkle it on the top. For a little, this is not only for um, uh, presentation, but it also adds a nice little taste to it. The taste of the nori mixed with the the taste the sweet taste of the fish with the somen sauce. You'd be surprised how good the nai nai comes out, or any surgeon fish actually. So the sushi's done. Looks pretty good, and the mochiko nai nai is done, and it's time to take it to the table. And there it is. Thanks for watching and aloha.